the principal dancer of the, of the River Dance Show. Just to give you some information on the River Dance Show, it's the 11th year that it has played in the Gaiety and it's on this year for 10 weeks. One of the principal dancers, or the principal male dancer, is James Greenan, and James is a native of County Cavan. Kindly, James has allowed us to follow him for the afternoon of his programming this Sunday. We're going to follow him around from the minute he hits the theatre till he comes off stage at the end of his show. We're going to go in now into his dressing room and have a word with James. James Greenan, thank you so much, James, for allowing us in Cabin to meet all the way up to the gate of the huh. theatre and to follow you for, um, for this afternoon, James. You're welcome. James, you are the principal of the River Dance production this time around. That's correct, yeah, I am indeed. Yeah. And today we're going to follow you around and be a fly in the wall, and you're going to tell us what it's really like behind stage and, and the life of a dancer and, yeah. uh, and, and things like that. But just a little bit, a bit about yourself, James, uh, the James that grew up. You're 25 years of age? 25, that's correct. Okay. Uh, well, I grew up, I was born and raised in London. Uh, my parents are both Irish. My dad's from Macquarie in County Monaghan, and my mum's from Couto, County Cavan. And yeah. That's where we lay the Cavan connection. That's, that's it, yeah. So uh, they moved over to England when they were quite young and they had their children, uh, myself and three other sisters. And then we moved back to Ireland in 2001, where we moved to Couto and set up there. and. The rest is history. Yeah. Here I am. Yeah. But tell us your dancing, James. When did that start in London? So, yeah, it started in London. I started quite late. Um, a lot of the kids start, you know, three or four. Teachers come into their national schools and they kind of start from there. But I wasn't really too keen on it from a young age. I grew up in South London, so football was obviously my huge passion as a kid. Uh, I began dancing about nine years old uh, for uh, a lot for a guy and a girl called uh, Des Silk and Julie Lachlan. So I danced there for a year or two and then moved to Ireland and the soccer, as you call it here, wasn't as good as what I had experienced in London and I joined a great school, a dancing school here, um, called the Mona Roddy School up in Dundalk and it just took off from there, you know, I just fell in love with it. They were, they were so passionate about it, about dancing there and they really did put their heart and soul into the school. We're uh, going to see you today, James, we're going to be behind the stage and we're going to see you, you know, with your, with your, with your um, cast and on stage and everything. But we'll talk a little bit about River Dance. 21 years since the first yeah. River Dance hit uh, during the break, actually, of the, of the Eurovision. And it's been going right. strong since. It's yeah. an amazing, it's an amazing dance, it's an amazing show. Um, uh, totally different. Has it changed much over the years, do you think? Uh, more or less. Is I mean, it ever changing? It, it is. It's modernising with the time, you know. They bring in new costumes. Last year we got a new LED screen and a uh, new set design with the lights, um, new LED uh, lights and all that kind of thing. So yeah, it does like, it keeps up with the, um, with, keeps up with the modern times, but it still has that authenticity, you know, the music is still the original, a lot of the original choreography there and you know what you saw 20 years ago is pretty much what you will see today. Yeah, and one thing we all know is it's still holding that magic of when the audience just go and see it, the, the magic of it. It is, yeah. Um, you're going to show us some of that magic today. What's a day in the life of the dancer? I see you're trying to have your lunch yeah. there, so tell us, tell us your snack now before you go on stage. Prince, what are you eating? Uh, well, I, um, I'm quite a health freak. I like to eat well and keep fit. Just, well, it just makes my job a lot easier. So here I just have some, um, I have some sweet potato, some chicken and veg. It's basically just, it's about three hours before the show, so it's good to get, you know, some good carbs in and get that energy, because you really do need a lot of energy for this. It's so high intense, intensity training. Yes, we will see, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so you do need that energy. So I like to have, you know, a bit of food, get it into me and then let it digest. The key is not to eat too soon or not to eat too late because you can be too hungry or too full. How many 
people are looking after you, do you have to look after yourself, like as a person training, nutrition, uh, obviously if a physio, you're going out for yeah. a massage now, before, yeah. before you go on stage, how many people are actually looking after you? Uh, well, we do a lot of it ourselves, but we do have a lot of help here. You know, they do guide us with nutrition and workouts, and obviously we have a physio and a masseuse and all that kind of thing. So you are guided in the right way, but you do have to put a, a lot of effort in yourself as well, you know. Um, obviously, you have to limit your alcohol intake because that would really have an effect uh, on your performance. You have to eat really well, so obviously you need to be able to cook and rest well. Rest well as well. It's key. You know, all these things are imperative to a good performance. If you don't get a good night's sleep the night before, if you have a a bad meal, or if you're not eating the right nutrients, then it will have an impact on your performance. You know, yeah. so these are all key things that you are in control of yourself. Yeah. So it's an energy for a show. It's like, how do you feel after yeah. the show? Uh, are, you, are you like on a high after show? I, mean, I know we're going to follow you, yeah. but just to briefly ask, are you on a high after show or are you just... You yeah, know, it can be a mixed emotions. Mm -hmm. You have good days and bad days like everyone else. Mm -hmm. So many shows are you doing a week? Say, we're, I know that there are three principal dancers you explained to me, but we're going to talk about that later because we'll meet yeah. female leads as well, hopefully get to meet them. Uh, three principal dancers uh, to, to share the love because obviously it's so, it's so energy packed, nobody could do the whole thing. No. Well, um, yeah, we have a very strong cast here, and obviously it's spread out over. Uh, everyone does their bit, you know. Not one any one person could do the whole show because it is so, so like high intensity, and you really have to be at the top of your game and peak performance to to be able. Because you know, there's people pay, paying for tickets, so you can't you can't let that standard slip or that quality. So we do seven uh, nights a week, seven shows here in Dublin, um, which is tough enough going. We have two on a Saturday, which is always tough because you tend to give it everything for the matinee show and then a whole fresh audience comes in for the evening, so you have to put in that same effort again just two hours after. So that's where food, uh, protein, all that kind of thing is important because you need to recover fast so you get, have the energy then to keep going. Okay, James, as I said, thank you for inviting yeah. us along today. We're You're going welcome. to follow you. We're going to be a fly on the wall after you, after you today. No problem. <laughs> What's this stuff? This is all costume. This is our quick change, yeah. Oh, quick change. It might be good to get a bit before the show. Mm. Um, I can introduce you. We have a dresser. We have a yeah. wardrobe lady who helps us and everything. Just on the again. Mark? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going up this way. There's a good few stairs here, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Straight ahead and then up again. I know. Up, up this way, yeah. Hi, buddy. So. Yeah. So here we are. Uh, there's a crew in see you, Billy. <laughs> here we are. We have um, my physio here, <coughs> Billy. He's he's the fellow that keeps us all nice and uh, nice and limber before the show. I it's, think you the tennis. <laughs> yeah. We like to just chill out here before the show and watch the Wimbledon final. <laughs> Gets us in the zone. But uh, yeah, Billy keeps us in good shape here before the um, before every performance. We get a half hour massage and does all sorts, needles, uh, yeah. snaps your back, your neck, everything, does it all, so um, yeah, it really helps us to get in the right frame of mind for the show and um, just get ready and we also have a bit of crack up here too, yeah. Billy, you've been here for how long? Yeah, I think this is my ninth or 10th summer here, so probably seeing more of the show than a lot of these guys yeah. have. But yeah, yeah. I work with them. They're, they're a good guy, good bunch to work with, very professional. Yeah. Very thorough, makes my job easy. They do everything they're supposed to do, which just makes everything simple. But yeah. They're a good, good group to work with. Oh, yeah, well. Good. Keeps us in good shape anyway. Today, there's all your pictures or posters all around the place. So it'll be 
there's collages all up and everything else around the place. One, two, and then one, two, three, and one, two, and one, two, and one, two, three. And one, two, and one, two, three. Amazing the way that um, you were a part, you were a child of people, of Irish people who had gone away and were brought up in a slightly different country. I know. And they are all the best dancers. Yeah. Not people in Ireland. That's the thing. Well, for my because we don't bother with the Irish dancing here. I know, but see, that's the thing. My parents, uh, my older sister started, but they brought her to Irish dancing classes to keep the Irish culture, mm. and then one thing led to another. But that's, that's why they did it. So when we were in England, they would hold on to that Irish and the community, the Irish community that was over there. And it just so kind of stemmed why, from That's why like, people abroad are much better at holding on to the culture. Probably, they yeah. Away and they go out there and learn it. Whereas people at home say, oh, we can get Yeah, you take it for any, granted, yeah. take it for granted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's true. In, in America, mm -hmm. Australia, it's huge. Where the came from? Yeah, America, it's huge now. Like, England and a lot of Eastern Europe and Russia and China are really big into it now as well. So, you know, it's a young art form compared to ballet and the likes of, you know, they've been going for hundreds of years and like for as long as you can remember. Whereas our Irish dancing is still evolving. It is only 20 years since river dance, so technically people have known about it, but only for the last 20 years that it's been global. So it's still really young and evolving. And maybe you do a little explanation on the summer school as well there when you're talking to yeah. So this is the summer you're rehearsing there or doing go-to routines for the summer school. That's correct, yeah. We're, for the next three weeks, um, Trinity and Riverdance have teamed up together. And they're basically hosting uh, a week each of workshops. There's kids, I think there's 120 kids for each week. And basically they're housing them out in Trinity Halls. And every day they're bringing them in and they're teaching them about the culture of river dance, the steps, the life we have on, on tour, nutrition, fitness, all of these kind of things. And they're running a showcase at the end of the week. So each child gets to dance in the river dance show. And then luckily, if, if they're lucky enough, they get to, uh, they get to perform on that stage. Pork, you are the associate director of River Dance. That's correct. Um, after dancing in the show for the last 17 years, I've transitioned to the other side, and I'm now taking on the role of associate director, which is a terrific challenge and a great transition for me. Okay, we were speaking earlier about the phenomenon of River Dance and how it all started 21 years ago, and I think you put it quite well. Well, yeah. I mean, I wasn't um, in River Dance when it originally began back in 1994 with the Eurovision Song Contest, but I do remember seeing it. I was probably about 16 at the time. And for me, it wasn't just about Irish dancing on the stage. It was a performance. And I think that's what really captivated me about Riverdance back then, was seeing Irish dancing as a true performance. And when I joined it, uh, I loved being a performer, but that's when I really began to fall in love with dance. The, the combination or the collaboration of performance and dance together, which Riverdance just does so well. Yeah, what is it about river dance that, that just captivates people, that just gobsmacks people, as they say in our end, makes the hair stand up on the back of their neck? Is it, is it the you know the sheer the dance routines, or is it or is it the way the dra the drama of it on stage, or, or what is it? Well, I think it's a combination of the music and the choreography and the di direction all coming together. I mean, you don't have a phenomenon like this without collaboration. And when you have a producer and a director, all the dancers, the composer, the lighting designer, the costume designer, they all have to come together, leave their egos at the door and work together as a team. And that's really how the magic of river dance has come about. And then instilling a culture in the dancers and the, the workers, whether it's crew or performers, that come in the door have to understand the culture. And that's what keeps the show going today. 20 years on, people would argue that the show is actually better today than it was 20 years ago. Yeah, so we're just saying in the 21 years since that first time it, it was on stage in the Eurovision Song Contest, it has moved with the times, as we were talking with, with James earlier, but still it has not lost the magic. The culture is there, the dynamic is there, the music is there, and uh, the people and the audiences are there. And, and that once again comes down to everybody understanding the role within the show. Um, and all those dancers that come from a competitive background that could walk in here saying they're world champions or saying that they're the best at this or the best at that, but they don't. They walk in here, they understand that they're a part of a team with an unbelievable goal to be better every single night. And they understand that every night they go out there, it could be somebody's first time to see the show. So the company mantra or the saying that we have before we go on that stage is, every night is opening night. And tonight you need to be better than you were last night.
that's part of the magic, isn't it? It is, it is, and the dancers deliver that. Yeah. And um, they have a great sense of pride and self belief um, in themselves and themselves as a team. And they go out there every single night, and there's never a night that I've watched this show since I've taken on this role that I haven't been proud of every single one of them that are up there. It seems like they give it 100% every single night and, and they seem to be getting fitter and stronger and more lean and more athletic every time people come to the show it's what they seem to comment on. Okay that's going to take us now to your, your summer school and that's what you were doing out on stage earlier you were you know putting the leads through their paces. You are passing all the culture to, to people from all over the world they are coming here to learn and get a look and get a taste and actually some of them are actually going to be lucky enough to get on stage with River Dance. That's How right. about that? Uh, it's, I suppose it's a great opportunity for them and um, we're in a very privileged position to be able to pass that knowledge on. Uh, we have some of the best dancers in the world. I mean, you look at the likes of James Green and Emma Warren and Siobhan and John Lonergan and Brendan Doris and you could just continue to name Callum and, and for all those students to get to come in and learn from these guys. And what we're also establishing there is once again that culture of being able to pass that pride, that sense of pride to another generation that will eventually, hopefully, take the stage in years to come or even by the end of the week. So I think it's a terrific opportunity for all the dancers to come in, but I also think it's a terrific opportunity for the leads here to get to take ownership, to take pride in their work and pass on that knowledge to another generation. Fantastic stuff. And listening to you, Horik, I have no doubt that this, the magic and the glory of River Dance will live on. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Horik Miles, Executive Director of River Dance. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. This is my girlfriend Chloe, and um, she's also a female principal dancer in the show, which you could say is where our love blossomed. Uh, she's also a personal trainer, she does fitness and nutrition classes for most of the cast here, holds a warm up every day before the show, make sure we're all nice and fit and shredded, and not fat. Um, I joined Riverdance eight years ago, so I've been touring the world with the show for eight years. I started dancing when I was eight years old because I'd seen Riverdance on the TV. Um, competed for many years, um, auditioned in 2007, was lucky enough to be chosen. Um, like James says, I'm a personal trainer too, so over the years I've done many a workout with a lot of the cast backstage, getting them prepared for the show also. Um, yeah. I love it, of course, love Riverdance. <laughs> So here's the cast being put through their paces. They're not sweating yet, but they will okay, be. Harden, please. Brian, we have a, and at the back. a very tough taskmaster, Master Brendan there. He's a good Ulster man that keeps us all nice and tight. Okay. So the ages basically range between, let's say, early 30s and early 20s and um, I'd say the average age is maybe 25, 26. We've all been, this cast has been together for about two or three years so we're, we're actually really close friends now at this stage you know because we're on the road all the time, we're living together, eating together, working together and we've just become such a close-knit family now. Sometimes we know too much about each other uh, which isn't always a good thing. But uh, it's a great group of people and great friends and, you know, the friends that you have for life. Uh, I've been doing this routine for four years. I've been doing leads in River Dance. So I know exactly... I know exactly how my body should feel. Because it's the same thing. Same thing every time. And I know if I'm tired at certain points then... My body is fatigued, I know if I'm getting through the warm up, warm -up pretty easy, then I should have a decent enough show. Because sometimes, sometimes your body just is fatigued, but you still have to go through. So that's why I find it important to have a routine so you can just always stick to it. And it'll always get you in the right frame of mind, get you focused before the show. That's some, that's some warm up. Yeah. 
It's a really hot day around here. Somewhere, somewhere above the surface. So, you know, that gets you. It gets you in the zone, gets That's the funny pumped. I'm telling you, that is a hard race up. James, just get really pensive and quiet and bring it down to that. So you know, get out of the light on it. So the Gaiety here is a very small theatre. It would be a lot smaller, smaller than river dance usually um, tours in the stages that we usually perform in are a lot larger. But the great thing about the, the Gaiety is that the uh, audience are very intimate. They're right on top of you, you know, you can't you literally can't miss a beat uh, and the atmosphere is always electric but in saying that it's super hot there's um because it's so condensed and so tight and the lights are so close so close on stage you just sweat buckets i did a i did a study last year i was doing a little nutrition sports nutrition course and I did a study during the show that, uh, to see how much water we lost per show through sweat. And on average, the guys, I did it on the guys, we lost two kilos just in sweat in the two hours. So, well, we lost three liters of water, but we drank a liter. And um, a liter of water is equal to a kilo in mass. So, in turn, we actually we actually lost three kilos, but as we were drinking a liter, it took away a kilo. So you, you sweat an awful lot, which means you need loads of food, loads of uh, fluid before you even get in here. Because as soon as you get in here, even as you see when we're doing rotations on stage there, you're already sweating. So you could even sweat uh, a litre or two before the show even starts and and now we're ready to go we're ready to hit the stage get the shoes on get changed and perform right, right. I'm going to get a bit of me putting my shoes on
Okay, James, so the show's over, cast is gone, the audience is certainly gone. There's just a few people tidying up in the gate theatre. Wow, what a day. What a day in the life of a principal dancer. I'm absolutely yeah. exhausted looking at you. <laughs> and uh, your warm up mirror and your stretches before you go on stage, amazing stuff. It's now quarter to, quarter to eight on the Sunday evening, James, and you're after a really hard week's work, and you've got tomorrow off from yeah. dance, at least, from, from the stage. Uh, you know, um, that is some pace of the show, James. How, yeah. how, how many more years do you think you can keep that going? Seriously? Um, well, probably as many as you want. You know, you really can fine-tune your body to uh, push it as long as you, as you can. Or what about as you injuries want to. and things like that? Uh, yeah. I know you can prevent all you can, but um, yeah, you know, you're, yeah. you're very aware. You can prevent, yeah. Here. I mean, you just really have to look after yourself. Uh, some people do go into their 30s. Some people, it's a choice thing, you know, they might just want to go off and do other things, settle down. Other people really do just want to do this for the rest of their lives. Yeah. But yeah, we all know, you know, our years are numbered. And, uh, you're like an elite athlete, really, yeah. in one sense, because you know, you're like ages. Like, absolutely, the yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you see what goes into it, like, you are really. Uh, putting your body through the mill, you have to really prepare. Mentally, eat, right? Well, mentally, you know, mentally, it's so can be training, especially when you're on the road. You know, a lot of people think you're just out in these countries having a great time. Although you, it is brilliant. You're seeing these fantastic sights and culture, learning about cultures and all that kind of thing. But you're doing that, and then some mornings you might have to get up at six o'clock, get on a bus. You're on a bus for the day, and you have to get on, uh, get on the stage and do the same thing after being sitting on a bus and. Uh, maybe you might have lack of food, stuff like that. So all those things take a toll, you know. It's and you're away from home. And you're right? away from home. So, you know, okay, it all so takes its toll. What's next, James? You've got nine months tour coming up? That's correct. So we're in Dublin till the end of the summer, till the 30th of August. And then we have two weeks off. And then we're away to the States. We do a nine months tour of, you know, of America. And uh, we haven't been there in three years, so we're hoping it's going to be a big, um, big comeback, and some big, there'll be some great audience out there, I'm sure. Yeah, but looking at the show and it's the 20th year, and you'll have big things coming up, 21, 25 years coming up. Yeah. Um, the magic we spoke about it earlier yeah. during the day. The magic is there. It's on stage. There's the chemistry between the dancers. There's the the alliance of the music, uh, the Irish music, and you brought in the American, but the, the tap dance off yeah. thing. It's just absolutely amazing. I don't think river dance is, is ever going to die. Uh, it's, it's still got the magic that Absolutely, we had yeah. day, the day one. Absolutely. And I think the music has a huge part of that. Till this day, you know, when everyone hears that iconic river dance tune, it's, it's timeless, you know, it, it is never, it never, it's never dated. Okay, you're traveling all around the world. River dance is recognized all over the yeah. world. Absolutely. And you know, the world is a huge place. There's a lot of countries that we still haven't been to in the last few years. We've been to countries that have only seen it for the first time. You know, there are a lot of people that still haven't seen it. And you'll be surprised even in Ireland uh, itself, the amount of people that haven't seen Rodan's Life. You know, they claim they've seen it on TV and that. But you'd be very surprised, you know, and it's, the world is a big place and hopefully it'll go for many years to come. Okay, folks, and out there, anybody who hasn't seen it live, it's no good looking at it on telly. <laughs> Tell them, James, you have to yeah. go watch River Dance because it's just spectacular. Yeah, you've got to see it live. It's, it's different from watching it on YouTube or TV. Absolutely. Emma and James, fantastic stuff. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody, the audience on the feet at the end, they're fantastic stuff. Emma, you were the lead lady this evening. Yes, so was. So, um, oh, I, you're a Dublin girl, you're yes, telling me how you started. I know, that's what I was just going to say. So I started when I was really young because my mum is actually an Irish dancing teacher as well. So she sort of just sent me along to her classes and it was only then when I got a little bit older and as little girls do I wouldn't listen to my mum. So she sent me off to another class to learn and it was there that my love grew for Irish dancing and obviously seeing river dance and everything throughout the years. I mean it was something I never thought I'd be in, it was just something famous that we watched and then it was only when I became a teenager I heard about auditions and things like that and that's how I kind of went about getting in. Well done, and tell you were a star on the stage tonight, <laughs> James. A fantastic night. Uh, you smiled all the way through that fantastic show. Really different second half. I loved the um, the two dancers going against each other. What would yeah. you call that? The American? What do you call it? The yeah, American tap dancing. Yeah, it's called trading taps. It's basically about yeah. the uh, the style of the American tappers against the Irish uh, traditional 
Irish dancing. And yeah, they have a bit of fun, a bit of a battle, and then they kind of come together in the end. So it's always... And nobody could pick a winner. No, <laughs> no. it's always a favourite. No, yeah, it's, it, it really went down. You have the flamenco dancer as well. That's correct, yeah. And is she really Spanish, that lady? Yeah, she's from Madrid. Uh, she's a feisty. Yeah, she is. <laughs> They often come into the troupe with no English whatsoever and then they tour with us so long that they, you know, pick up English along the way and become part of our little family on the Okay, road. we don't want to hold you long guys because you know you're exhausted after your show and you need to do your cool dance and stuff. So what literally are you going to do next? You're telling me you're going to stand in a yeah, bucket of ice? Yeah, I'm literally going to go stand in a bucket of ice now to try and reverse the effects of pounding the floor for two hours. <laughs> and you James, yeah. you have to have your food. Yeah, I'll probably have a shake with all kinds of raw eggs and ginger and spinach and all that kind of thing just to get the nutrients back in and jump really in the ice hydrate. bucket as well yeah, yeah. yeah. okay so then so. you go to bed tonight that's that's another day's work then yeah. and then tomorrow yeah. does it all start again do it all again yeah, yeah. basically do this every day sometimes twice a day <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I guess your love for it, your talent, and uh, the chemistry of River Dance will never die. What do you think, guys? No, no it's way. timeless. Definitely timeless, I think. Well, well done, guys. You go off and do your thing. Thank, and thank you. You were absolutely brilliant. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much.